Welcome back to another video on my channel and this video is about the, in my opinion, most important accessories for the new Leica M11, namely the hand grip, which just came out and uh, is more functional than what we are typically used to on Leica M series rangefinder cameras and the new electronic viewfinder Visoflex 2, which finally is here and we are of course looking into all the details and everything you need to know. Let's get started. I'm going to start with the hand grip, so let's spare the Visaflex for a moment later. And uh, let's unbox this here. Let's turn this around. And if we look here, we find the same leather texture as what we have on the Leica M11. You can also mount additional accessories here, and some people like to do that. We have something to screw it firmly on the camera body. We have a tripod mount here and then I think we can open this up on the go because this feels like rubber and we get access to the battery and the SD card and the USB-C port. So let's mount this on the camera and let's see how this looks like. So here's the Leica M11. Let's get this at the bottom. So here's the screw. It immediately reacts and finds the right place. Let's screw this firmly. And here we go. Okay. I think if we look at this at the back side of the camera, there is something going on here which we have not had on previous hand grips. So there is some design element here. What did I just say design element? Well, it looks like a design element and it's also in this nice matte black finish but it's way more. And I said it at the beginning, like I really spent thought and included functionality into that hand grip. And what you see here is an Arca Swiss compatible bottom plate. And that means you can mount it on any Arca Swiss compatible tripod head and so on. I have one example here and that's a slider. And uh, you see here, this is Arca Swiss compatible. And what I can do now is I can mount this without any additional tools here. It just slides in. I can screw it firmly and you don't then need any other equipment. It will just work like a charm. Look at that. Super firm, super nice. And uh, that is one of these elements which like are built into the hand grip, which I think are super practical and super helpful. So we have an Arca Swiss compatible bottom plate here. Let's look at this from the front side. And you see this perfectly matches the texture and color of the camera body. And I think it looks quite nice. But most importantly, it's not all about the look, of course. That's secondary to me. It's this firm grip I like when I have the camera in my hand. And you see this here, it really gives you a solid grip here. And the camera cannot accidentally drop down. I said this many times on my channel. I'm not one of those Leica shooters who uses a strap here and have it around my neck. I'd rather have a hand grip and in this way I can secure the camera in my hand in the best possible way. Looking now at the bottom, we find some functionality we've not had before on Leica M series hand grips. And uh, I just showed it at the beginning. There is a rubber finish here and you can open this and then you get access here to your battery compartment. So you can get the battery out and replace it, which is quite nice. You also have access here to the SD card, of course, because that's sitting below the battery. Let's do this again. I forgot to show that. So here we have the SD card, so you can change cards on the fly. And uh, we also see that the hand grip is designed in a way that the USB-C port is accessible at all times. And that's quite nice, I think. I think here, like I really spend some thoughts for meaningful improvements. And I like the design of the hand grip a lot. This one clearly will stay on the camera body from now on. Let's now have a look at the new electronic viewfinder, the Visoflex 2. And uh, let's open this up. I just got it this week. And uh, let's have a look inside. Okay. Not really spectacular, but there is a pouch in here. Let's have a look here. Yes. So there is a pouch. Uh, it looks to me like nylon fabric here and you can store the Visoflex 2 in this pouch here. There's nothing else in the box if you have a look. 
And then let's see how this gets out. Very nice, this is empty too. Let's get this back into the box. And let's see what we have now here. So I was quite excited to get this and I wanna put this in perspective, of course, with the former VisoFlex, which I have here on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side, we have the new VisoFlex 2. And first of all, in terms of resolution, the former VisoFlex had 2.4 megapixel. And by the way, the display here has 2.3 megapixel on the Leica M11, so the LCD touchscreen, 2.3 megapixel, the VisoFlex formerly, 2.4 megapixel and the new VisoFlex 2 has 3.7 megapixels, so a significant boost in resolution. It's also an OLED viewfinder and I'm sure the quality what you get when you look through that electronic viewfinder and do your image composition is quite nice. The build quality is super high, so this is a full metal finish here. If you want to listen to that, quite nice and uh, it looks nice. It also can use in different angles here. So this is the flat perspective and there is a magnetic clip here which actually holds this together. If you wanna listen to the sound, quite solid, very good. So let's get this open. So you have the flat view, you have the 45 degree view. So here you have 45 degrees and you have a 90 degree view. So you can shoot this at waist level which is also very nice in particular for people coming from the Hasselblad world or phase one world where you see this very often. At the bottom of the VisoFlex 2, we have some rubber cover here for protection. So I can remove this and then you see the electronic contacts here or I can keep it on and then it's protected and I can store it in that pouch for travel. So quite nice, I think is a very good solution. For the time being, the VisoFlex 2 works only on the Leica M11 and not, for instance, on my Leica M10R, which is this beauty here on the table. And a firmware update in March, as Leica announced, will make the VisoFlex 2 compatible with the M10, the M10P, the M10R, the M10D, and you can use it on all these cameras, so it's downwards compatible. For the time being, you can only shoot this VisoFlex 2 on the Leica M11. What you should also know is that the former VisoFlex, so this one here in my hand, is not working on the Leica M11 and will continue not working on the Leica M11. It will continue to work on the M10, for instance, M10P, M10R, even after that firmware update, but it will not work on the Leica M11. And I made this mistake early December when Leica gave to me the camera for testing it out. And you see it in, I think, one of my videos that I was in the city and had mounted this VisoFlex and then realized very quickly it doesn't work, but I nevertheless left it in the hot shoe. And now with the new VisoFlex, we actually get all functionality we want. There is also here an eye sensor. You see these two little dots here. So it recognizes when you approach with your face, the viewfinder, and then it switches from the touchscreen or the LCD to the EVF. Let's mount this now on the Leica M11. So let's get this one here away. Let's remove the protector here and let's get this inside very carefully. It's the first time I'm doing this. Yeah, it snaps on, looks actually good. Let's compare this just for fun with the Leica M10R and the former VisoFlex here. So that's the design difference. You have here now a rectangle design. It's a, a totally different form. It's also not as high as this electronic viewfinder here, but most importantly, as I said before, the specs speak for themselves, an OLED viewfinder, 3.7 megapixel, 2.4 megapixel here on the M10R. I'm not filming through the VisoFlex 2 and clearly that was a bit hard to achieve. I had to get very close. This is the result, but at least you get a glimpse on how it looks like when you look through the EVF here. For instance, using the control wheel to zoom to my subject here and then using focusing here. So in focus, you see the focus peaking, kicking in. Quite nice, zooming back out. So I think this is a really good electronic viewfinder. I think the quality when I look through it with my naked eyes is way off better than what we had with the former VisoFlex. And clearly you need to make your own impressions here. Filming through the EVF is probably not the best solution, but at least I wanted to show how this looks like. There are also some settings in the menu where you can adjust the behavior of the touchscreen in collaboration with the electronic viewfinder. In order to see this, you go to page number four 
and on page number four you have display settings and here first of all you can adjust the brightness of the touchscreen or the LCD as well as the brightness of the Visoflex 2 and then you can adjust the eye sensor sensitivity. I typically have this on high. And then you have here one more menu entry and if we go into that, you have the following options. First of all, you can leave it to the eye sensor on the Visoflex 2 to decide whether things are playing in the EVF or whether they are playing on the LCD and that's the auto setting. You can also decide that everything should play on the LCD or touchscreen. That means if you are in play mode, if you are in the menu in the settings or if you are shooting for instance with focus peaking. And then you can also go into EVF. That means now in contrast to LCD, everything is actually playing in the electronic viewfinder. So you're shooting, your menu settings and also if you are in play mode and checking your images. And then there is one more setting which I think beginners might find a bit difficult to understand but it is actually very easy. It means that during shooting everything you see will happen in the electronic viewfinder but if you are in play mode checking images sharpness and all of that or if you are in the menu and uh, tweaking the settings then the eye sensor on the Visoflex 2 will decide whether it happens in the LCD or in the electronic viewfinder that's EVF extended I didn't find an English manual yet for the Leica M11 but here you see the description of the settings in the German manual which you can download from leicacamera.com and uh, I'm sorry I only have it in German but it is essentially telling you what I just told you about these four menu entries here. We are now at the end of the video and uh, sometimes people say to me look you're so much in love with Leica is there anything they should have done better in what you just presented. The first point of moderate criticism which Leica could have done differently or maybe should have done differently concerns this pouch here for the Visoflex 2. I don't think this is a very valuable pouch here and it feels cheap actually. And I think the former Visoflex came in this leather pouch here, which I like a lot. It also provides better protection and uh, it firmly holds the former Visoflex in the case and then you can carry it. And here with this pouch, I don't think that's a very good solution. The second point of moderate criticism concerns the USB-C port. And uh, I'm not sure if this would have been possible, but I would have liked to see any protection mechanism so that this port is not all the time open and exposed. I don't think this is helping to have an open port here if it is raining and you are shooting in nasty weather conditions. And I think there are ways where they could have done some opening here, which you can also close and seal and not exposing the port all the time to all kinds of weather conditions. But that's the only two moderate points of criticism I have. Everything else is just perfectly to my liking. I like shooting with the Visoflex. I still also like shooting with the rangefinder here and the optical viewfinder. I love the camera. There's much more to come. As I said last time, I'm working on a video about dynamic range of that camera. I will also look into the noise behavior, into the pixel binning in lower resolutions and everything you might want to know about this new beauty in the Leica M series family. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel. There's always more to come. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy. And of course, peace out.